What's going on guys, I'm IC Rhythms, welcome back to another video, and in this one we're talking PlayStation 5, we're talking Technical Director at Remedy, SSDs, load times, that's what we're doing in this video, and for me I think it just makes sense for me to talk about the PlayStation 5, because at some point I will own that thing, it just, I've owned every other PlayStation console with the PS1 generation just a, a coupled with the N64 being my favorite. I feel Sony was at their best. Uh, some of the third parties even today were at their best during that time. And even during the PS2 era, if someone said that you're, you know, PS2, you thought that generation was the best or that console was the best, you know, I'm okay with that opinion. You know, at that time for me, the PlayStation 2, really I just wasn't doing as much gaming as as I had always done before during the PS2, Xbox, and GameCube generation. I just, for whatever reason, I wasn't. And the gaming I was doing was mostly spent on my Xbox, and I was doing a lot more online stuff than I was single player stuff. And for a time, my taste had changed in some ways. So that's something I always keep in mind. But yeah, the PlayStation 1 for me, is still the best, you know, Sony just uh, so determined, so hungry uh, to have success, and they did. They got it back to back with the PS1 and the PS2. So here we are with the PlayStation 5, and this technical director at Remedy is saying that a lot of the stuff that Sony is saying about the PlayStation 5 is true, uh, but along with saying that, the SSD side of things may not be as special as Sony is making it out to be. It just kind of depends on how they want to do everything with streaming the data and even though you're going to have a much better cpu side of things and obviously a much better gpu side of things as well they can decide how they want to offload all of the the game development onto the the gpu the cpu maybe a little bit of both and i think this generation a lot of developers started going more on the GPU route, and I think that's because the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One CPU was pretty awful, or I guess you could say is pretty awful. So now they're gonna have, um, you know, so much more that they can do. And we know that, especially with the first party stuff, consoles are, console games are optimized very, very well. A lot of the time I think obviously more so than PC because with PC exclusives you have large budgets but you don't have what's usually like a hundred or a hundred and fifty million dollar budget but sometimes sometimes you get something special from PC where you're like I don't know how they did that with this small team and this little budget when you start comparing it to something like Red Dead Redemption or a Grand Theft Auto or what I would imagine is like The Last of Us or Uncharted and, and maybe even like some of the Mario games, Halo, you know, even though even though those games are coming to PC at some point now, the, the Halo titles, that you, you still think about them as, you know, uh, Xbox or just Microsoft. So it, it just kind of depends. And I, I think that's, that's the key because Sony, I, I know that they will, Sony will definitely push more so for visuals and doing things with physics, AI, so on and so forth, and give you that native 4K, you know, locked 30 FPS experience. They they just, they want you to be impressed by what they've been able to do with what is going to be an outdated machine even before it releases. If I were a betting man, and I am in this case, I would say you'll hear a lot of what you've heard this generation early on especially when it came to the playstation 4 and there was even a couple of developers with the playstation 4 pro that were trying to say that you know having the playstation 4 having the playstation 4 pro was like the equivalent of having you know x amount of dollars of this capable pc which was not accurate whatsoever and even now you can still build a pc for the amount of money that you would pay for a pro I don't know about a, a PlayStation 4 because those are going for on a deal, you know, 170, 200 bucks or something at this point. So, but if, if we start making comparisons to PC and the PS4 Pro, there isn't any. There, there never was, and anyone saying that was just trying to hype you up so you could go out and buy a PlayStation 4 Pro or get said game for your PlayStation 4 Pro thinking that you were going to get some 
awesome PC-like experience. Now, I do think with the PlayStation 5, the load times are going to be much, much better, possibly comparable to PC. The, the PCs that we have now, obviously, at it, it, some point during the generation, as always happens, not only will PC still be superior, but it will com completely blow past the PlayStation 5 and the next box, and we won't need to make comparisons at all. Comparisons will still be made by foolish people, but as it always happens, PC will still be better at the start of the generation and will completely blow them out of the water midway through. So we know how it's going to go down. We know developers are going to say what they're going to say. We know Sony and Microsoft are going to say whatever they have to say to sell their consoles. I'm telling you guys as those of you that watch me and are console only gamers and you prefer PlayStation, don't buy into it. I, I think hopefully you're old enough and wise enough by now to not buy into a lot of that hype. It's, I, I think with the load times and SSDs, I, you're going to see a lot of games that were, you know, from this generation and, and possibly previous generations on the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox that do load a lot faster. It'll, it'll be, like I said, very comparable to PC in some ways. I don't think you'll be able to make all the comparisons. I don't think they're going to be one to one, but I, I think you'll see very little difference. And it just depends too, like how, how large is the SSD going to be in the PlayStation 5 or the next box? Because a one terabyte is still somewhat pricey depending on the brand and and what you're trying to do with that and a, a two terabyte or more ssd which is that should be the minimum for next generation two terabyte storage should be the minimum okay in my opinion that should be the minimum and i'm trying to figure out how that's going to work and how they're going to be able to afford that and still keep a four or five hundred dollar console uh, brand is obviously going to matter. Maybe it's going to be something else in the PlayStation 5 and the next box that's helping with that load time. I just know that, you know, even loading up large games, very ambitious games like Red Dead Redemption 2 on PC, there is no comparison. The, the, the load time when you start comparing to what the PlayStation 4 Pro and the Xbox One X can do, there is no comparison. Like P PC blows those out of the water in terms of load time. So I'm interested to see what kind of load times and, and what the, the entire SSD situation is going to be on those machines because while I'm sure it's special and it'll be very special for those of you that only game on a console, it's probably not going to be anything that we haven't already seen on PC. And again, a lot of that depends on what he was saying, the technical director at Remedy, what kind of games are we gonna make? How ambitious are these games? What's the budget? How much how much data is involved here? What, what, are, the, what are the textures like? All of this different stuff, it matters when you're making these games, SSDs or not. So that's my video, that's my take. PlayStation 5 SSDs technical director says maybe not as amazing depending on what sort of games are being made and how ambitious and everything that they're trying to do with said game. You know, you, you may not see a big improvement in load times. An improvement, yes, but a big improvement, all of that's going to depend on, well, for me, it starts at the top, which is the talent, right? And then just publishing, you know, how much money is involved, uh, management. You know, Sony has proven they, they have one of the better managed overall um, teams under their umbrella, all of their teams under their umbrella. And they, they do a really good job getting those games out. And for the most part, in, in my opinion, the ones that I like, the ones that I have interest in, have been of uh, pretty good quality or even a, a pretty high quality. So it just kind of depends. And it starts at the top with the talent. The hardware obviously matters, even if we're only talking about a four or $500 machine. I'm just curious about the size of those SSDs, the amount of storage, the brands, you know, uh, how reliable those are going to be in the end. I'm, I'm curious. I, I can't wait till Sony starts talking more about the PlayStation 5 so we can get a better idea. And you can bet your ass 
I will talk about it. If, if Sony is talking and, and they're talking in a way that we can all understand, well, I'm going to make content about things that they're saying and we can talk about it more at that time. So thank you guys very much for watching. I do appreciate it very much. What do you think, man? Are you guys going to be there day one, PlayStation 5? Are load times even a big deal to you? Or SSDs even a big deal to you? Do you even, even care? Do you even know what an SSD is? You guys have a good one, man. Again, thank you for all the continued support. Peace.